Miss Namibia 2022 has concluded and I must say that I was very impressed with the production this year. Listen, it's still not Miss South Africa, not by a long shot. It's still not Miss Universe Philippines. But it is a huge step up for Namibia from what we've seen in the past. And I think it's due to NBC's like more hands-on involvement this time around. NBC, which is the Namibian Broadcasting Corporation has always been affiliated with Miss Namibia, but they have taken a bigger role, I think, in the past two years. And it is definitely evident when it comes to the production of the show. So I was very much delighted to see that the camera angles were at least decent most of the time and the production was pretty much okay. When it comes to the hosts, um, there were two hosts, of course, Adriano Fusaki, who I love. I think this guy is such a great host. And then Michelle McLean Bailey, who of course was Miss Namibia 1991, also Miss Universe 1992, as well as Miss World 1991 or two top five contestants. She was the other host. And I, guys, I just, having two hosts especially at Miss Namibia because Miss Namibia is still sort of not the best you know coordinated pageant and it was seen last night when the two hosts were talking over each other plus I do not think that these two hosts had any chemistry I love Michelle on her own I love Adriano on her own but Michelle should have truly been a judge and that's that. I don't know if she, they just wanted to give her the spotlight. I don't know what the story was behind that, but Adriano should have been the only host and Michelle should have been a judge, to be honest. When it comes to the actual judges, ugh, you guys, who are these people? Like, who are these people? Like, how, like, one or two people on the judging panel deserve to be there and I can... I can see how they would fit into this industry and how they would know sort of what to look for. But like three people, like the marketing manager of Coca-Cola or whatever, like what was he doing there? I do not understand this judging panel. Okay, so we have to talk about opening number because like two hours or an hour before finals hit, an hour before Miss Namibia started, I posted to my Instagram like an open letter to N Miss Namibia. Please stop making the girls wear white shirts with jeans for opening number because it is so freaking boring. It's overdone. I feel like they do it every year and they do it so often for photo shoots as well it's boring af please stop doing this i guess what the girls were wearing for opening number jeans and a white shirt guys guys i do not even own a crystal ball how am i predicting these things miss namibia is just they are so predictable sometimes like we need to step it up especially when it comes to opening number opening number sets the mood for the entire night and if these women are coming out in jeans and a white like tank top what is that supposed to say it's not glamorous it's not fun it's not interesting at least have a great Namibian designer, like an avant-garde type of Namibian designer, design something interesting for the girls to wear for opening number. So when it comes to swimsuit, I was, I was pleasantly surprised by the swimsuits themselves. I thought these swimsuits were gorgeous. They were gold and they had this beautiful greenish type of cape. And the thing is, in Namibia, okay, the sun is always shining. We have very little women in Namibia with like a cool skin tone. Most Namibian women's skin tones lean um, warm, you know, with yellow undertones. So I feel like having gold, you know, and having that beautiful, like sort of warm-ish, but still pale type of green, it just suited every single woman so beautifully. And it was such a pleasure to the eye. I absolutely love the swimsuits themselves. That was a great choice because like I said before, usually when you put girls in a cooler type of swimsuit like they did last year with those blue swimsuits, 
the girls won't look as good because most Namibian women have warm skin tones. But then again, oh, they had the girls doing swimsuit two by two. Why? Why? How? Listen, we all know that the Miss Namibia, the camera team that they have, already struggles just usually to coordinate themselves, right? Now, when there's two contestants on stage, it is inevitable for them to mess up and maybe not film one as much. Just, they should have just had the girls walking out one by one. I, it's one of my major pet peeves to have girls walking out on stage two by two, as well as the jeans with the white shirt thing. Guys, I'm sure Miss Namibia, their people secretly watch my videos just to learn my pet peeves and then apply them to their next show. Because guys, we have to talk about the like black navy gown situation as well. We'll get there. I wanted to kill myself. It was so depressing. But like I said before, when it came to swimsuit, the whole girls walking out two by two, I couldn't even concentrate on the girls. I couldn't even see their walks properly because it was all just moving so fast because no girl gets the spotlight when they're walking out two by two. Just have them walking out one by one. I do not understand why they did this. Now, I must say that I did like the little videos that they played as like, you know, filler content in the middle of the show and throughout, um, especially the ones showing what the girls were doing, especially the charity type of focused videos, because it really showcases what Namibia is and what they stand for. And I also like that they got the girls' opinions on things as well during these videos. That's something that I really, really enjoyed. And I think that in moderation, they could keep doing that. Now listen, when it came to the entertainment for the evening, there were three separate guys. Um, one, the one guy who was doing sort of a rap type of thing, I think the girls should have been walking swimsuit to that. I thought that guy was amazing. He had me so hyped up in my little chair. But then unfortunately when he asked the crowd, it was still sort of early in the night. So he wanted to hype up the crowd. That crowd was so dead. Whoever you are, sir, because I didn't get your name, you deserved a better audience. But like I said before, entertainment and the usually the artists that Miss Namibia hires, they're usually Miss Namibia's Achilles heel because, you know, sometimes the, the artists that they have just do not give, you know what I mean? Or they do not sound as good live as they might in the studio. But all three of the artists that Miss Namibia had last night, I am happy to report. They were able to keep a note. They were entertaining. They were engaging. So I am very happy. Oh, okay, we've come to the like black velvet, which come to find out it was actually very, very dark navy blue velvet segment where the girls were just coming out in black dress after black dress i felt like i was at some sort of gothic convention oh my gosh i hate black on stage i hate black on stage i do not have a problem with black gowns if it's appropriate in a situation where the room is perhaps very light and airy if you're perhaps at some sort of dinner or gala i don't mind wearing black i don't mind seeing people wear black but on a stage where the lights are like going to try to expose every single detail of what you are wearing black is not the best option plus black washes you out a lot when you're under these harsh lights and you're being lit from the back and you're being lit from the front and you're just black is not for the stage and i don't know how many more times i have to say this but this probably wasn't it, i know it wasn't the girls choice i mean they they were put in these dresses because we did see multiple of them in the same dress cut sort of basically but this is for this question is for miss namibia why 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 do you do this why what was the point of this segment what was the point of this segment it's supposed to be like what cocktail 
or whatever those weren't even cocktail dresses like what the hell was the point of this black navy blue velvet sort of segment i do not understand the purpose and i do not think that most of the girls looked very good in these gowns because like i said before they were supposedly very dark navy blue this is what i heard from someone who was actually at the contest but it still didn't look good on these contestants because most of their skin tones lean warm navy blue is in essence a a, a cool color so why do we do our contestants like this now when it came to the actual evening gown competition these gowns were also sponsored by namibian designers and i think the theme was namibian metals and namibian diamonds or jewels or something like that which is very uh, applicable because namibia is one of the biggest ex exporters of diamonds other jewels and we also have a lot of metal industry metal mining things like that so i thought that this theme for the evening gowns was very appropriate very applicable and also very doable for a gown because when you think about evening gowns we do think about you know sparkle we do think about elegance we do think about glamour and i feel like you know metals and diamonds and jewels and all of that fits into that beautifully the guy who was singing while the girls were walking evening gown guys this man, mm -mm -mm, this guy can sing. This guy was so, I don't know, dashing and handsome. And he just, he just was amazing, I think. He was so understated, low-key, just standing there with his guitar, strumming, singing very softly, singing very beautifully as these women were walking. I don't know, they should get this man back so the first girl was diana and i thought that her gown was beautiful but i thought that diana even throughout the evening was over performing a bit especially when it came to her when it came to her face like her facial expressions she does tend to over perform a bit with nongi i thought that her gown definitely should have been floor length at least um, I thought that that would have been much better. With Ashley Shane, the gown really just wasn't it. And she was definitely struggling to walk in it. With I know one thing specifically that bothered me with this gown, although it's not such a big deal, is that I could see the underskirt of the gown, which I thought should have like extended all the way down, or it should have been cut off at the like legs it should have been like uh what do you call it like a bodysuit type of thing but instead they have this awkward piece of fabric that is able to be seen through these harsh lights but other than that i did think the gown itself in essence was gorgeous and that Ina gave a great performance with michelle i thought that there was nothing particularly wrong with this gown was it the absolute epitome of glamour also no with this gown, I thought that the white uh, bit underneath, again, just like the other gown that I've mentioned before, should have extended all the way to the floor. I also thought that, is it just me or was there something off with her makeup? With Cassia, guys, I was shocked because I definitely expected more from her walk. I did think her walk was a bit strange, <laughs> but... Um, her face, her facial expressions were definitely on point for me. This gown actually I thought was very gorgeous. It sort of borders on bridal, but I think that the sexiness and the sheerness of it makes up for it. So I really, really love this gown. With Zawadi, unfortunately, they put her in like a very dark type of vibe with the gown, with the black I thought that all of the black bits in the gown should have perhaps have been gold. And later on, I think I saw her parents and they were wearing a very similar thing. If those were her parents or not, I don't know. Um, family members of hers. And they were wearing sort of the same thing. But for me, Zawadi, Zawadi's gown should have, would have been better if the, um, the black bits in it were maybe like a gold or maybe like a nude. But I do love Zawadi. Um, um, I didn't like that they that I only saw her in dark colors for the evening. I thought that she really stood out 
in swimsuit where she was wearing light colors, bright colors like this bright gold because that really suits her. That really suits Zawari's personality. With this girl, her walk was just way too stiff, but the gown was nice. With Lyonnais in particular, I thought her walk was very like stiff and stylized and not natural at all guys like just look at it <laughs> i just i just didn't think it was very natural uh, but then her dress actually was gorgeous but i do think i know the inspiration of this dress um yana hainish wore a similar dress to this at miss supranational 2019's preliminary competition and of course, Yana Hainish is Namibian as well. And I even think that she and Lyonnais might know each other or be associated in some way. So I do think that that was the inspiration for this gown. Again, with this gown, the underskirt needed to go all the way to the floor because it just, it looks strange. It cuts off her leg. Like, why were we cost cutting when it came to a Miss Namibia finals gown? I don't understand. So when it came to Miss Photogenic, Aina was the winner and it was it was a bit awkward on stage at this point. You can tell that they didn't really think about what to do at this moment. And then there was a moment when you can hear Michelle say, thank you so much, go back. Thank you so much, go back. <laughs> and then Miss Congeniality was Zawadi. Can I just also say that that room looked so overpacked like i would be so claustrophobic i feel like i can smell that room just by looking at it on screen so when it came to the top five we had nongi which i thought was well deserved also lune i i don't think lune performed well throughout the evening to be honest with you her evening gown performance really just wasn't that great then we also had ashley which I don't know what top five was based on, whether or not it was based on evening gown and swimwear all together. Because, to be honest with you, Ashley sort of definitely struggled when it came to evening gown. Like, her walk was very much hindered by the cut of that gown. I thought Diana did deserve to be in the top five. Um, I underestimated Nongi and Diana going into Miss Namibia 2022, but I definitely think that at the end of the day, they did deserve to get to top five based on their prior performances in Evening Gown and Swim. And when it came to Cassia, I thought her walk in Evening Gown was a bit questionable, not gonna lie, but I was glad she made it nonetheless because she was my predicted winner if you watched my Miss Namibia 2022 prediction. Now the final Q&A, guys. Oh, this is where things are happening, okay? If you know, you know. <laughs> guys, I can't even think about it without starting laughing. And then um, all of the girls got the same question. So presumably there was no headphone situation. I think the girls who were backstage, the girl who was like fifth, I think had a huge advantage to the girl who had to go first. Um, because obviously, I think the girls who were just like chilling backstage could hear the question or they did know the question as soon as the first girl was asked. So I would say that the first girl had a huge disadvantage over the other five or the other four, especially the very last one that had to come up. But surprisingly, the first girl who was asked this question, and the question, by the way, guys, was how different would the world be if women was in charge or how would the world be different if women was in charge? And Nongi was first, and surprisingly, she gave the best answer of the evening. I'm just, spoiler alert, Nongi gave the best uh, top five Q&A answer. That is just the fact. It's indisputable. I don't care what Miss Namibia says. Nongi gave the best answer for top five Q&A. Thank you, Michelle. While existing in a patriarchal society has shown us that women are first and foremost ceiling shatterers. When women are leaders and entrusted with leadership positions, we go into these spaces knowing that number one, we have to shatter those glass ceilings, and number two, hold the door open for the next woman to come in, rise, and shine. 
Liu Nei came up. I thought she was alright, but she didn't even she didn't really get into how exactly the world would be different. What I did like about Nongi over the rest is her authenticity, sincerity, the stability in her voice. Leone didn't really have that, but she did give an answer nonetheless. Okay guys, so I know you guys, if you watched the show, you guys have been waiting for this part. Ashley came up. Guys, wait, no, I'm gonna play the clip for you guys and then we're going to discuss. In your opinion, how different would the world be if women were to rule the world? When I think about that question, I feel kind of offended. Because why are we assuming that the world would be any different if women were in charge? Thank you. <laughs> Guys, she dropped the ball so hard. I nearly felt, I wish, I wish I was filming a reaction. I was not expecting this at all all the question is supposed to highlight how the world would be better if women ruled i know the question is how would the world be different the implication is somehow that women would make shit better we would improve upon things she she did think this through okay and probably when she realizes how her answer came off, she's going to be sh so embarrassed, shame. So when it came to Diana, I don't know guys, she was a bit just too lively, she was too passionate, she was overdoing it a bit. Also, what, did she really answer the question? And lastly, when it came to Cassia, I think she was nervous. I think you can just tell that she was a bit nervous, but at the end of the day, she did okay as well, but in my opinion, still not what Nongi did. Nongi did the best for me and at this point I thought that Nongi would win because if the winner is based on final Q&A then it should have probably been Nongi for being honest. So that has been the highlight of my journey. <laughs> That's so sweet. <laughs> That's amazing. I expected you to say something like traveling to Israel or something like that. That too, that too. Uh, but no, you were one of the highlights of my journey as Miss Namibia. Well, okay, so the second runner-up ended up being Diana, which I'm apathetic to second runner-up. But apparently this year Namibia is sending a candidate to three pageants. So the second runner-up is apparently going to Miss Earth and the first runner-up is going to Miss World and then the winner supposedly is going to Miss Universe. Uh, this hasn't been confirmed, it's just what is being said in the pageant sphere in Namibia. But anyway, so Diana got second runner-up, which I was like, okay, fine, whatever. Um, and at this point, to be honest with you, I thought that maybe Cassia would get first runner-up, but um, they gave first runner-up to Lune, which like I said before, Lune didn't perform the best throughout the evening. Her answer wasn't the worst either. So I would have thought that Lune would get second runner-up, Cassia first runner-up, and then Nongi would win. But, okay, so Lune got first runner-up. So at this point, I definitely thought, okay, so they're going to crown Nongi because she had, by far, the best final answer. And they ended up crowning Cassia, which... Even though Cassia was my predicted winner, and obviously I love being right, okay? I love bragging about being able to predict shit in the pageant industry. In fact, it's one of the things that keeps my ego impossibly large. And so I was conflicted a bit because I did think that Nongi, at the very, very least, guys, deserved first runner-up. I'm very happy that Cassia won. Like I said, if you've heard me talk about Cassia, if you've watched my Miss Namibia videos, you know I adore Cassia. I think she's amazing and I want her to represent Namibia overseas. And I definitely think that she could do a decent job at that. But then again, <laughs> Nongi really came out and showed up and showed out. And for her to not even be a runner's up, The Miss 
Namibia organization are literally like, what, are you going to believe your own eyes and ears above us? But yeah, guys, that was Miss Namibia. Um, I predicted the winner. I accidentally arrived at the exact right conclusion against all odds because Nongi was just so amazing. Oh, I'm so pissed that Nongi isn't like a runner-up and that Nongi won't be representing Namibia overseas. But I did say on my Instagram, guys, that Nongi should be representing Namibia overseas. She should at least try for Miss uh, Supranational Namibia at the very least. Or we have a Miss International Namibia right now competing at Miss International. But I think that Nongi could go to Miss International as well in the future. But guys, let me know what you guys think about Miss Namibia 2022. Listen, the production has improved a lot but there is still a lot of room for improvement please uh, just have adriano as a host just have him alone we do not need two hosts especially at miss namibia it's such a small stage it's such a small like pageant even the stage feels cramped when there's two people on it so yes no more having the girls walking two by two please and just one good host if michelle must be included just put her on the judging panel at least then there would be someone who knows what to look for thank you guys so much for watching if you haven't already please subscribe and i will see you guys in the next one bye